and girls, so today we're going to be reading Chapter 9 of Night of the Speedfoot Toads by Bill Harley. The next day in class, Ben can barely look up at Mrs. Tibbetts. He slumps down in his seat, thinking about the snakes. He knows that snakes don't ordinarily strike people, at least if people leave them alone, but he can't help picturing them gliding out of the cage, lurking in the garden, ready to strike out if someone passes by. Someone like Mrs. Tibbetts. He sits up straight and tries to concentrate on the class discussion, but he can't get those two triangular heads out of his mind. When Ben gets home, he has a snack, then goes to his room and shuts the door. He doesn't know what else to do but work on his homework. He stares at his geography assignment. An outline of the report is due tomorrow, but Ben hasn't been able to get started on it. Now it's the last thing he wants to do. The desert seems a million miles away. The phone rings. Ben runs into the hall and answers it. Ben, this is Mrs. Tibbetts. Ben is too stunned to speak. He stares at the wall. Ben? Oh, right. Hi. I need to ask you something. Okay. Ben's heart is racing. When you came by yesterday afternoon, did you notice anything about the cage behind my garage? What? Ben is fighting for time. The cage behind my garage, the one under the lean-to. Now Ben's mind is racing, too. He knows she should confess, but he just can't. Um, no, I didn't notice anything. Well, someone apparently opened the cage and then fastened it shut again. She stops talking for a moment, leaving space for him to say something if he wants to. Ben, the snakes in the cage are dangerous. Somehow, they got out. Wow. Ben's voice is barely above a whisper. He feels terrible about the lie, but he can't bring himself to explain everything to her. What kind of snakes were they? He asks. Rattlesnakes. Timber rattlers. That's why I asked you to stay away from them. Rattlesnakes? Ben tries to sound surprised. Yes, I thought maybe you were looking at them when you were here. Um, no, Ben says. Oh, this is horrible. I should have kept I shouldn't have kept them. Where did you get them? Ben tries to sound like he's interested and doesn't know anything about them. They're very rare around here, Mrs. Tibbetts says. My husband's was licensed to capture and move snakes that had lost their habitat. He was going to transfer those rattlers, and then he she pauses for a minute. And Ben knows she's thinking about her husband dying. She takes a breath and goes on. I should have done something with them. Now who knows what happened. Maybe there was a hole in the cage. They got out somehow. Maybe someone stole them, Ben says. It's hard to imagine. No one knew where they were. Oh, what have I done? You, you didn't do anything, Ben says. Yes, I did. I kept them, and I shouldn't have. Will they be all right? I don't know. The teacher's voice sounds so sad that Ben's throat tightens. It's too early in the year for them to be out, and they usually can't adapt to a new habitat. This is all my fault. Maybe they'll be okay, Ben says, trying to cheer her up and himself. Thanks. Then before Ben can hang up, she asks, Is your mother there? Ben freezes. Why does she want my mom? Um, yeah, he stammers. May I speak with her? Ben feels sick. Sure, just a minute. He calls his mom. Who is it, she asks. It's Mrs. Tibbetts. He hands her the phone and walks away. But as soon as he's around the corner, he stops to listen. His mother says hello and then falls silent. She's quiet for a long time. He sticks his head around the corner and sees her standing there with the phone to her ear. Are you sure, she says. And after a pause, she talks for a while, saying how much Ben has always liked the outdoors and wild things and how she appreciates Mrs. Tibbetts' concern. She hangs up and sees Ben watching. I wish you'd told us about those snakes, she said. Ben nods. If his mom asks him whether he let them out, he knows he'll have to tell her the truth. Well, she says, I'm relieved you didn't have anything to do with it. She sounded very upset. His mom heads back to the kitchen. Ben stands, stands there. He's missed the, his chance to tell the truth. He missed his chance to let the truth come out. Sinking deeper and deeper into a hole, he feels worse than ever. He 
goes back to his desk and stares at the blank wall. The desert is two million miles away now. When he closes his eyes, he sees the snakes. He wonders where they are tonight. Ben does his best to avoid Mrs. Tibbetts in school that week and the next. When he's in her class, he does his work, but he doesn't raise his hand. Twice she asks him after class if he's managed to catch a peeper or if he wants to come check on the fernal pool again. Both times, he shakes his head and hurries out of the room. It's not like he's lost interest in the toads, though. He spends a lot of time in the wood behind his house. His parents must notice, because one day his father comes home with a new pair of waters. This is the Savior sneakers, he says. They fit him better than the ones that he used to at Mrs. Tippett's house, and he likes the feeling of being waterproof. Using the net Mrs. Tippett's gave him, Ben snares a few American toads, but he still doesn't manage to catch another peeper. He decides to keep one of the toads, and with the money he saved, he buys a terrarium from the pet store. After fixing it up with some mud and a couple of plants, Ben settles the toad in its new habitat. The following Thursday afternoon, Ben is sitting at his desk at home, trying to get started on his geography project. His mom has laid down the law, no more wandering in the woods until he's made progress on his report. His sister is always playing with Rory, Ryan's sister. The house is quiet. He has no excuse for putting his, this off any longer. He stares at the report guidelines. He picks up a pencil and taps it on his notebook. He loves the desert. Why can't he get started on his report? Frustrated, he looks around the room until his gaze comes to the rest on his gaze comes to rest on a book about amphibians he brought home from the school library. He picks it up and starts leafing through it. He glances over at the terrarium. The toad is crouched in the corner. He doesn't look happy. Four glass walls and some dirt and plants don't make much of a home for something that's used to living outside in the wild. He skims through the section of the book on building a terrarium for amphibians, looking for ideas. Just then, the doorbell rings. I'll get it, he yells, slamming the book shut. He runs down the hallway to the front door, happy for an excuse to escape his homework. He opens the door and finds his sister Agatha standing there. Ryan is just behind her, holding a book in his hands. The door was locked, you bozo, Agatha says and shoves past him. It was not. Try turning the knob for once, Ben turns back to Ryan. Hi, he says. Hi, Ryan says. Mom and Rory are waiting in the car. So I can't stay. I brought your book back. And when I was at the library, I found these books about amphibians and reptiles, too. I thought you might want to see them. He's so excited. He practically throws the books at Ben, and they fall to the floor between him. Whoops, he says, and scrambles to pick them up. I took them out on my library card, and my mom said we could bring them over. You can give them back to me when you're done. Ben helps Ryan with the books, and Ryan just keeps on talking. They're not as cool as your book. Your book is the best. I've read some of the chapters twice already, and... Ryan's mother honks the horn and waits for Ryan to hurry. Sorry, gotta go. Thanks, Ben says. Ryan smiles his loopy smile. See you tomorrow, he says. On his way to the car, he turns back and calls out, Oh yeah, I put a picture I drew in one of the books. It's for you. Okay, Ben says. He waves goodbye as Ryan's mom backs the car out of the driveway. Ben looks down at the stack of books in his arms. Still standing in the doorway with the door open, he opens up the top book. Between the first two pages is a colored pencil drawing. It's beautiful, much better than anything Ben's ever done. He didn't even know how Ryan could draw. It's a picture of a bright orange creature perched on a rock by a stream. Above it, Ryan has written in large black letters, Golden Toad, Endangered or Extinct, Handle with Care. Underneath the picture of the toad, Ryan has written an inscription. For Ben, your friend, Ryan. Ben's embarrassed. He hasn't done anything to deserve Ryan's friendship. He's barely even talked to him. He takes the book to his room. He searches through the desk drawer for the tape dispenser and sticks Ryan's picture on the wall above his desk. Then he sits at the desk and looks at the library books Ryan bought. He opens the biggest book first. 
the one with the glossy color photograph of a bright red frog on the cover. He thumbs through, looking at all the different species of the frogs and toads. Then, he stops on a page and stares at the photograph of a small, smooth-skinned, olive-green toad. Two yellow stripes curve across its back. Its eyes are bright. The edges of the eyes are golden and the pupils are vertical, up and down, not horizontal like other toads. The diagram shows the projections on the hind feet. They look like little shovels. He reads the caption. Eastern Spadefoot, now rare and endangered in several states. It's the toad Mrs. Tibbetts told him about, the kind that appears every year in her vernal pool. Compared to some of the other species in this book, it doesn't look like much, but Mrs. Tibbetts had made it sound like a treasure, like a special secret that only the two of them know about, an endangered species right around the corner from where he lives. Then thinks about the toads out there buried way under the ground, waiting for the rain. He'd love to see them when they came out for one, for that one night. But that would mean talking to Mrs. Tibbetts, and that's something he can't imagine doing, not after what happened with the snakes. His guilt sits in the pit of his stomach like a big, cold stone. He reads all there is about the spade foot, and it only makes him feel worse. Ben, his mother calls, it's time for dinner. He looks at the spade foot one more time and closes the book. He'll have to work on the report later.